very good evening my dear friends we are going to take up the doctrine of ultra virus under the memorandum of association what is the meaning of ultra beyond virus means powers ultra virus means beyond the powers of beyond the powers of this doctrine of ultra virus in fact tells you that the company's memorandum stipulates certain objectives and then beyond the objectives stipulated the company cannot move up that's what i told you the example of gunpowder and face powder so if the company wants to go beyond it has to alter the articles of memorandum of us how the alteration should take place i already explained in that event one important aspect is that the doctrine of ultra virus tells you like it was in courtman versus brougham courtman versus brougham that the function of the memorandum of association is to delimit and identify the objects in such plain and unambiguous manner as that the reader can identify the field of industry within which the corporate activities are to be confirmed anything done beyond this would be dealt with as ultra virus and then that would be declared as illegal and untenable same is the case with regard to lic versus escorts limited i have given this citation to you last time lic versus escorts limited and then i have given this citation ar 1986 supreme court 1370 1370 that the company functions on the basis of and regulated by the companies act and its memorandum of association and the memorandum of association is hereby bound by the objects clause <laughs> so friends basically a company has the power to do such things as are authorized to be done by the companies act and then the memorandum of association and the acts reasonably and fairly incidental to achieve the main objects which are implied so here is a case forest versus manchester etc rail company one of the landmark judgments deal with this deals with this <clears throat> in fact lic versus escorts limited is another landmark judgment on the strength of memorandum of association how the company should act now the english cases forest versus manchester etc rail company in this case a railway company had the authority to use boats to be supplied for a ferry then it employs the boats for excursion trips when they were not wanted for the ferry because they should not be is a business ex in fact expediency now use of boats was held to be incidental to the main purpose and the court of law held that it is within the powers of the company it is intra virus but not ultra virus so the best example is the gunpowder and face powder a company is having an objective to manufacture face powder and it wants to get more profit in manufacturing gunpowder it can't do so if it does so it is ultra virus then it has to alter the article memorandum of association with a special resolution 
then it can go ahead for gunpowder or any powder as it is. So friends, there is another very important case. Even now it is a very good law. You go to internet, Google and click Lakshman Swami Mudrayar, immediately you will get the whole judge, judgment and then the entire gist. The reason is that this is a famous case of Supreme Court during 60s. The judgment was given and it is a good law even today. Friends, this is Dr. A. Lakshmana Swami Mudaliyar and others. Dr. A. Lakshmana Swami Mudaliyar and others versus Life Insurance Corporation. 1963, Supreme Court. AIR, All India Reporter, 1185, page number. Friends, in this case, the directors of a company who were authorized to make payments towards any charitable or benevolent object or for any general public or useful object donated 2 lakhs rupees to a trust for promoting technical and business knowledge. All right. Actually, the shareholders by resolution authorized the director to do so. Then the question was, this donation that was given for a charitable purpose or it is to be develop the business and the technical aspects of the business which would be benefiting the donor company. So now the matter was taken to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court held that the payment is ultra virus because the directors could spend for the promotion of only such charitable objects as would be useful for the attainment of the company's own objects. And here is a case where it is something a different aspect. The donation is rather motivated and then here the concept is not followed so the payment is ultra virus friends the meaning of ultra is beyond virus is powers i request you to read the escorts case then this lakshman swam mudaliyar versus lic case both are have given citations both are equally very important in the existing scenario and they stand as good law even today. Now, so basically the concept of ultravirus tells you that ultravirus means it is beyond the legal power and authority of a company. And if it is proved to be ultravirus, it's not binding on the company and even the entire body of shareholders cannot write it. So as I told you, gunpowder story, the suppliers will not be able to recover a single rupee, a single rupee. In the event, it is proved that the transaction is ultra-virus, even though they have supplied. Section 70 of quasi-judicial contracts will not apply, equity will not apply, and here purely the concept of the, or the doctrine of ultra-virus only will apply. So a person who does an act in the Ultravirus Act, does it at his own peril. This is the most important concept. In this regard, in the examination point of view also, there is a very important citation which is called Ashbury, Rail Carriage and Iron Company Limited versus Ritchie. Ashbury, Rail Carriage and Iron Company Limited versus Ritchie. This is an English case, House of Lord's Decision. In this case, friends, the company was incorporated with the objects that the company can make, sell, or lend on higher railway carriages and wagons. And any other business of mechanical engineers and general contractors, and then they have the company has got an offer to purchase lease and then lend and building 
the railway lines i actually there is a provision in the articles of association that the company can expand the business beyond memorandum by a special resolution this is wrong articles cannot override memorandum and articles and memorandum cannot override the act i have already given the legal provisions for that am i right do you remember do you remember i have very clearly said effect of memorandum and articles of association under section 10 of the act do you remember they bind and further i have also given you a particular provision that section 6 says the companies act would override the memorandum and articles of association so you have to read 6 and 10 together in that event here is a case where basically in this ashbury's case the articles provision is wrong then the company also was having a clause to purchase lease land and build but the problem was that the railway lines was not there it is with railway carriages then the company got a business offer and then it passed a special resolution to ratify purchase of a concession for laying a railway in belgium laying railway is different that is rail track running trains is different running wagons is different this is where the whole distinction came so what happened here once upon a time in india also there was a i think a private railway now slowly we are again going into that now the distinction comes tomorrow in corporate side after 10 years what is railway and then what is rail train running train is different making a railway lane is different. both can be done by same company or it could be done by different companies <laughs> so now in this case a special resolution was passed to purchase a concession for laying a railway in belgium then the court of law held that this is ultra virus it is an act of ultra virus and then once it is ultra virus act it can't be ratified later on this is the most important aspect an ultra virus act cannot be ratified with retrospective effect if it is ultra virus that is the end of it it can't be with retrospective effect you can start off everything with prospectively prospectively but not retrospectively so in this particular case it is a landmark judgment telling you that in an ultra virus act question of ratification will not arise if it is a case of articles it could be ratified in the case of memorandum there is no question of ratification then friends now i told you what is the doctrine of ultra virus what is the principle involved the important cases including the escorts case and then the ashbury rail carriage versus richie's case these are all the legal principles based on this judicial precedence then legally what is the effect of committing an ultra virus act you are supposed to understand legally number 1 in an ultra virus act the aggrieved party opposite party or anybody could go to a court of law and get a restraint order called injunction <laughs> there could be injunctive relief and there could be a preventive relief there could be a curative relief also then the next thing in an ultra virus act the company is not liable for the contract the directors are personally liable lifting of corporate veil third one it results in breach of warranty of authority the company is not bound to any of the transaction and then in the event of an alteration it could be prospective but it cannot be retrospective and then in case of an ultra virus 
a property acquired through an ultra-virus act, then it can hold and protect that particular property. Other parties cannot enforce. Best example, National Telephone Company versus St. Peter Port Constables, 1960. A telephone company in an area not empowered to lay telephone lines, but it has laid. Then one D has seen it and took law into his hands and he has cut down the lines. And then the company claimed compensation. Now the court said it is company's property. It is ultra virus act or what something different. The person could have come to the court of law requested the court to grant a restraint order or a curative order. Instead, he has taken law into his hands in ultra virus acts company is protected, company's property is protected, so that the court said this particular act is illegal and compensation has to be paid to this particular company. Last but not least, in ultra-virus acts where tortious liability arises, the company cannot be held vicariously liable. This is the most important legal principle, universal legal principle, that in ultra-virus act, company cannot be held vicariously liable. So friends, these are all the effects. We have seen the principle, we have seen the case law, then now we have seen the effects of ultra-virus act. Now the last part, we are going to see the exceptions of ultra-virus act. What are the exceptions of an ultra-virus act? What are the exceptions? Number one, if it is an ultra virus act of powers of the directors, but intro virus the company, it may be ratified. For example, it is within the powers granted by objective clause, but beyond the powers of the directors, that is articles of association, then the articles could be amended power can be granted, the act can be ratified because it is not against the objects clause of the memorandum of association so that it is ultra virus the powers of directors but intra virus the company's objects clause then it is valid and exception will come into picture. Second point, the ultra virus it is articles then the articles can be altered with retrospective effect and it is intra virus the memorandum of association but irregularly done, then it can be ratified. But it is ultra virus totally. Question of ratification will not arise. Question of amending with retrospective effect will not arise. And if a person borrows money from a company under an ultra virus contract, the company can sue him for recovery. Always in ultra virus acts, it is the directors who will be held personally liable and the company interest is protected. And then the company's money is protected. <laughs> in ultra virus act, there is a right called right to follow property. It exists if the property is available in specie, that is physically it is available, then injection also can be granted, but the person should act before the identity is lost or money is spent. For example, in ultra virus transaction, one lakh rupees is given to company. How do you identify? If you can identify, run behind, Court can intervene on the spot and then the money is traced, you can recover. Otherwise, it is lost in desert. It is in the ocean of the company's capital base, money base. Question of recovering will not arise. A property physically is given to the company in ultra virus transaction. And then you can trace it, catch it before the identity is lost. Like raw material, it is being put into the process, the identity is lost. Before that, the identity, I can catch it, I can take it with the help of a receiver or a advocate commissioner appointed by the court of law, then the person can get appropriate redress of his grievance. Otherwise, it is the interest of the company which is supreme. Courts always weigh the balance of convenience in favor of the courts and always they protect the interest of the courts only. So friends, this is the concept that 
today we have studied the concept is the concept is the ultra doctrine of ultra virus acts of memorandum of association i have told you the principle i have told you the case law then i have told you the different subjects of case law and i have given you the important cases then i have given you the effects and then i have given you the exceptions and finally the doctrine of right to follow property with this background my dear friends we conclude our discussion on this particular today's session of doctrine of ultra virus it is a very important doctrine in any way a short question a long question or some kind of a two marks question in different modes it can be given if you remember what i gave you now what i told you today and then you study further in read avatar singh examination point of view <laughs> lectures of company law by sm shah and then ramaya ramaya at the moment not necessary because that would be for research purpose datta and ramaya but avatar singh best textbook for examination point of view and then the tax man's publications also along with the bear acts with all this background conceptual study you have to find out in avatar singh and tax man and then these two basic textbooks with this background make out a good answer examination point of view to prepare the topic then you will be able to answer any kind of question that is given in this regard so thank you very much my dear friends and then uh, i am very much thankful to you and we will meet again tomorrow at 6:30 and complete the rest of the portions pertaining to the memorandum of association and then tomorrow i will complete our discussion on memorandum and proceed with articles in subsequent classes so thank you very much for all your cooperation we'll meet again good night good night thank you so much good night